If you're a residential real estate agent earning $200,000 a year and you want to grow your passive income, this show's for you. Learn the secrets other agents use and hear from experts in our field in order to guide you along your journey to investing in assets like apartment communities so that you can turn your commissions into cash flow. I'm Randall DeCleared. Let's go, baby. All right. All right. Welcome back to Agents Building Cashflow. It's great to have you on today. I'm your host, Randall McCleared. And today I'm going to discuss uh, something that's been on my mind for some time about the, I, I guess, the the way the market cycle is going and the types of investments that are out there. So for the last few years from, I guess, 2018, 1920, you could buy a property and you would win just by buying it, right? You, appreciation was there. Um, you could fall over into a great return simply by buying a property, right? Now things have shifted quite a bit in on those deals, those, those deals in recent memory, you could buy them and you would have the appreciation, you'd have the cash flow because cash the, the rents were increasing at a dramatic rate. And the market was such that you were getting equity appreciation as well. So you're growing the the actual wealth that was being created in those in those projects was happening. We're now in a shift where IRR, the returns on those same types of properties are, are being compressed a bit. And that's because the rent growth is not as hyperbolic as it has been. And because the rent's not skyrocketing uh, at double digit year over year percentage increases, we are actually getting back to stabilized market, I guess, right? On the multifamily front. And so that means that the IRR, which is the internal rate of return that uh, some investors are sensitive to, meaning I need a certain return profile on these properties for me to put my dollars into this investment. Those have come down in recent times. And so let me, I guess, set the stage and we'll talk about what IRR is. Okay. It's the percentage rate earned on each dollar that's invested over a period of time that it's invested, right? For each period of time that it's invested. And so what I want to talk about today is is an IRR sensitive investor compared to a non-IRR sensitive investor and, and kind of what the drivers are behind the two different types of assets that you can acquire, depending on the type of investor you are or the type of uh, operator that you are. And so I've been trying to think of uh, and again, this all comes from what I'm looking at and the deals that I'm looking at. And, and I really want to find really good real estate that is very stable and secure and has the cash flow there. And even though the returns may be a little bit lower on a uh, IRR basis, uh, the properties are solid properties. They're fantastic properties because you, you have a, a less chance of losing if you buy a really good piece of property, location, 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 and property itself, all of those good things. So again, that's that's the rationale behind this episode. So just to discuss, right, there are some investors, and you may be one of them, uh, if you were to put your dollars to work, you want a pretty high IRR on your return. And so that to me is a prior, priority over high return uh, compared to stability in a property. So, um, you know, to me, if you're going for a higher IRR, you're going for a higher risk property. Okay, higher risk projects. Um, even though they have the higher the potential for higher returns, they also have the higher potential for risk. So there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, obviously, it just depends on what your strategy is and what your personal goals are. Um, so it's it's kind of a, a risk reward sort of deal. Um, IRR higher IRR often implies that there is a higher risk. And so to to give you an example of a higher IRR property, it might be something like uh, a fix and flip. So in a in a residential arena. Uh, your IRR goes through the roof when you look at it and say, I bought this property, I rehabbed it and I sold it. And it took me two months to get through that whole process compared to a rental property where you buy it, you're going to sit on it for years. And then you're, you're going to realize some kind of gain down in the future. Your IRR is going to be compressed on because you're putting cash in uh, on the rehab and you're getting it out very quickly and you're getting a big bump. And so your IRR is going to look pretty, pretty good. We're proud to be sponsored by Ridgeline Investment Group. Ridgeline has a track record of transacting more than 53 million in assets throughout Texas. Ridgeline is currently looking to acquire 100 to 200 unit class B multifamily communities between five and 20 million in San Antonio, Temple, Waco, Tyler, and other Texas secondary markets. To learn more about Ridgeline Investment Group, visit 
www.ridgelineig.com. On a multifamily front, um, it could be a development project. Again, you're going in, you're putting money in, you're not going to get any cash flows for the first uh, year or two while you're getting that property stabilized, but then you're going to sell that or ideally, the, the or not ideally, whoever the operator is may sell that property in two years and there's going to be a big IRR on that. It's a little riskier because you're not getting any cash flows along the way and the economy can change dramatically over a two-year period from the day that you put that investment into that project to the day it's actually stabilized. So it, there's just a risk associated with buying a non-stabilized property and not fully rented out. And so, again, it's just important to know the the risk reward profile with with chasing higher IRR returns. Okay. The other side of it, I kind of alluded to this, is that if you're chasing the the higher IRR, you're usually short term focused. You're looking for a, you know a quick pop. You want to be in and out of that investment, and that'll juice your IRR, your uh, return. So the difference is in in a non-IRR driven investor, there's usually a priority over preservation of capital and stability uh, compared to just getting a a return. Like all I focus on is a return. I need this this massive 36% return compared to an IRR that is lower, maybe 10, 11 something like that, but it's stable. You're buying a certain type of asset that is going to be tried and true. It's already stabilized and and you are just putting your money to work and you're getting that return on a consistent basis and you don't have to really think about it. So again, non-IR driven may be more interested in consistent cash flow and like I said, long-term preservation of capital. So stability. So when you are Looking at these types of properties, it might be a B plus on the multifamily side. If you if you don't know the different classes of property, D is is like a very rough property, needs a lot of capital improvements. Uh, a C kind of mid tier uh, may need a lot of capital improvements, but depending on where it is, you know the rents are there. Uh, workforce housing, that sort of thing. Uh, B uh, and then an A. So A is like the super nice, brand new, all the greatest amenities and all of that. So uh, we focus a lot on the B and C plus uh, just because there's value add that we can we can force some appreciation, but we keep them and the rents go up, all of that. Okay, so again, uh, a non-IRR driven type of purchase would be uh, looking at something instead of like a three to five year time horizon on the investment, you're you're buying these. And this is me personally, like I want to buy property and hold them for the long term. I'm growing wealth. I'm, I'm investing in these deals and I want my kids to benefit from these properties that we're buying. Uh, I want to be able to 1031. I want to, all, all these things to keep growing the cash flow over time. Um, so I'm okay with a lower return today, just knowing that down the line, it will it will pay off dividends because one, I'm preserving my capital. So anyway, the, the types of deals that I w- I am looking for and looking at are C plus and B properties that are in great locations that were built after you know the 1980s, so that they have pitched roofs, uh, they have central heat and air, they have the right kind of wiring, and I know that the actual product itself, the building, the physical building, will last longer um, and have fewer issues than buying a, a class D property. Um, not to say I wouldn't buy those, but again, that's a very specific type of property that I would, uh, that I would buy for the long-term game that I'm wanting to play. It is non IRR driven quality assets, quality properties, long-term preservation of capital. So again, that's, that's one of the differences. If you're IRR driven, then you are short-term focused when you are non IR driven, you're value driven and you're long-term driven, right? (laughs) So consistent, predictable returns over time with less risk. That's really what we're looking for. All right. So again, I've I've kind of talked about this a little bit about my strategy, obviously throughout this process, but just to really hit it home, the coming from the single family world and doing a lot of fix and flip, doing a lot of wholesales and really being a high transaction volume business for the last 10 years or so, I have completely shift focus. Like I want to spend all of my time looking for long-term value-driven properties that will produce consistent, stable cash flows for a, a long time to come. 
And so that's really what what I'm targeting and looking for. It's not necessarily an IRR driven. Do we take that into account? 100%. Yes. I want to know what the IRR is. I want to be able to talk to uh, potential investors about what that IRR is and all the other value driven metrics that we look at, like AAR, average annual return, IRR, and there are a number of other ones. So cash on cash, all these things. We look at all of those, but in general, uh, the strategy is preservation of capital, investing in solid properties that are going to to last, that will continue to be uh, sought after by tenants in great locations that we are very comfortable that the employer base is going to remain. The values will slowly increase over time. We're not uh, We're not getting... Uh, crazy with our underwriting and saying that these properties are going to hockey stick up and value like they had in the last few years. And so again, that's really what, what I'm looking for. And so it's really important, just wrap it up with this. It's really important that you understand the operator that you're working with and then the types of properties that they're going after and just understanding the different types of return profiles for properties. The higher IRR that you have on a given deal, it looks great on paper, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a, uh, it carries the same amount of risk as another project. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at offerings that are coming out and really know, again, this goes back to early episodes, know what your goals are for your investing. If you're trying to build your nut, which is build your, your actual cash in the bank, then going for an, a higher IRR is, is great going for short-term deals that are going to grow your actual capital in a shorter period of time, that's that's great. And so we offer some of those. Uh, there, there are some strategies that we implement. Like I said, I wouldn't mind. I, I just yesterday was looking at, it was a probably a, a C minus property, needed a ton of work and needed a big CapEx budget attributed to that property in order to get it back online, but it was in a great area. I like the the historic nature of the whole neighborhood, um, historic tax credits that we could get from the city and, and then a renovation, you know, kicker as well. And so I look at those things and I know that I can be in and out of that deal, but my exit personally would probably be to refinance that property, return as much capital to investors as I could, but maintain the property and keep it for the long term. Um, again, just getting it to that position of it being a great property and great location, moving it from probably a C to a C plus and, and that sort of thing. So just know the types of investments and the types of return profiles when you're looking at these deals and, uh, and you'll do great. So if this information is helpful and you're getting value out of the show, I hope you are go on, please, if you would, uh, and rate and review the show. And, um, and it helps us out big time. If you have specific content that you're interested in, in hearing or having me cover, by all means, reach out to me. My info is in the show notes down below. And, uh, and I would love to chat with you and get to know you better. All right. Catch you on the next episode. Did you know that 80% of the agents we speak with got into real estate in order to gain passive income so they could obtain financial freedom and become work optional? If you want to stay up to date, the best way is to make sure you're subscribed. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do it now. We'll catch you on the next episode.